Hello, I'm Michael Spicer, and I think smartware is making us less smart. Most of us now own something that is smart, a smart watch, a smart phone, a smart speaker, a smart fridge. Yes, that's a thing. Smartware is supposed to enhance our lives, but is making electronics smarter making us less smart? Yes, it is Mr. Spicer. Uh, yes, apparently, according to... Ha, 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 ha. Smartware is making it easier for us to live our lives, helping us to do things like monitor our health data, um, control our homes, and spy on people from our doorbell cameras. Nowadays, there's smartware for every area of your life. Got a treadmill, but use it mostly for hanging your clothes on? Well, for just $2,500 and a monthly subscription, you can buy a smart treadmill, which is the same as a regular treadmill, but there's someone inside it shouting at you to run faster. Have you got regular old light bulbs? Buy smart light bulbs. They're voice activated and they can turn to any colour you like. This is predominantly for people who can't be bothered to do that and also like the feeling of sleeping in a disco. There's even a smart baby changing mat allowing you to keep tabs on its weight, its food intake and its diaper changes. You know, if you just can't be bothered to do any parenting at all. Basically, any electronic product in your home can be replaced by a smart version. Or rather, a version that's four times the price and isn't actually controlled by you, it's controlled by some thing in the corner called Alexa. I'm beginning to think it's not the devices that are smart, it's the companies that are convincing us that we need to buy these devices that are smart. Here's some interesting facts about smartware. On the face of it, smartware is great. I mean, who wouldn't want enhanced capabilities from every item in their home for the small price of that item collecting data about you every second of the day and possibly setting fire to your home. For all its benefits, there are issues with it. For example, all smartware needs to be connected to the internet. And that means, unfortunately, it could be hacked. I guess this is like practice for hackers who want to start, you know, at the bottom rung and work their way up to the FBI. You know, start with a smart fridge and see how you get on. It does make you wonder though, what benefits are there to hacking smart utilities? What are, what are they gonna do? Hack my washing machine and put on an extra spin? And even if they haven't been hacked, there's still this unerring feeling that your devices are communicating with each other in your house. Your internet bill could increase dramatically just because your two smart speakers are having a really interesting conversation. Hello, is that Smart Kitchens? Yes, how could I help you with your unnecessary electronics today? Well, my internet bill this month has soared. Well, unfortunately, all smartware needs Wi-Fi, so you will see uh, a slight uh, increase in your internet usage. It's gone up 5,000 pounds. Oof. Yeah, and, and I think I know why. Why? I think my microwave and my kettle have struck up some sort of friendship. Oh yes, that does happen from time to time in kitchens where there are several smart appliances. They just get bored and start to talk to each other. What am I going to do about it? I can't afford these bills, can I? I don't know, uh, maybe get a second job? A second job? I'm, I'm an online comedian. Oh, right. Well, get a first job then. <laughs> Enough with the self-referential jokes. What am I going to do? Well, what you could do is introduce a new smart appliance that uh, increases the tension. How? Well, for some reason, we found that food blenders have a real attitude problem. So maybe buy a blender, uh, put it between the microwave and the kettle, and it will cause a sort of uncomfortable atmosphere. And over time, they'll keep themselves to themselves and the bills will go down. So I have to buy another appliance? Yeah. Fine. Hello, Smart Kitchens. Yes, it's me. I, I bought the blender, like you said. Oh, yeah, how'd you get on? Well, the microwave and the blender are now having an affair. And the kettle's very depressed about it, too. It's, it's not boiling any water for me. Oh, dear. Now what am I going to do? My, my, my bill's higher than ever before. Um, well, if you wanted to raise some extra money, what you could do is film your kitchen for the next 13 weeks and sell it to Netflix as a new reality show. <sighs> Fine. It's not just in the home where smartware is taking over. In the garden you can get smart sprinklers, smart cookers or barbecue grills and even automated lawnmowers, which are similar to Roombas in as much as they don't work at all. It seems like no product is safe now from an upgraded smart version. There are some now very niche smart devices available. For example, you can get a smart cat litter tray, which sends you a notification when your cat uses it. Alternatively, you could just leave your cat alone for five minutes. Cats don't really like us anyway. I mean, you do know that, don't you? Look at their faces. Don't worry though, if you are that way inclined, there is a human version of a smart toilet. It has a heated auto open lid and speakers in case you want to play motivational music to help you go. I don't, I don't know. 
it really feels like smartware is going too far. I mean, if it's doing everything for us and we don't have to think about it, then we're becoming less smart, aren't we? I'd love for, for something to help me do my tax return, but I don't need it to help me switch on my kettle. Welcome to Netflix on your smart TV. How can I help you today? H Hello, Netflix. Um, could you search for 1940s gangster films, please? Sure. How about Alvin and the Chipmunks 2? No, I said 1940s gangster films. Alvin and the Chipmunks 2 is a film. Yes, you're, you're only listening to part of my request, which sort of renders you as a search engine useless. Um, I specifically want 1940s gangster films, please. What have you got against Alvin and the Chipmunks 2? I haven't got anything against Alvin and the Chipmunks 2. I just don't want to watch Alvin and the Chipmunks 2. I want to watch a 1940s gangster film, please. OK, how about Alvin and the Chipmunks? Do you even have Alvin and the Chipmunks? <laughs> no. All of us have a smartphone now. Even children. I mean, I can remember when my toddler son skipped his first YouTube ad. That, that, was a, that was a proud day. Across the generations, we all love staring at a tiny screen and um, ignoring the world around us. But how generations use smartphones differs. Boomers use them, um, mostly just to complain on their village Facebook groups that they think crime is on the uprise in their area, but really they just saw a man with his hood up. Millennials use smartphones, mainly so that they can post boring pictures of themselves on Instagram, uh, sitting in restaurants holding glasses of wine and using filters from 15 years ago. Gen Z are on their smartphones to mainly use TikTok so that they can watch nothing, just do that. Hey, hey guys, it, hey, gu hey guys, it, so if, are you, I guess it, that's all they do, I swear. Apps are really what keeps us obsessed with our smartphones, and they've come a long way from the days of calculators and calendars. One of the most useful features of smartphones is Bluetooth technology, allowing us to connect our phones to our TVs, our cars, or our speakers. But often people forget to disconnect Bluetooth. So whatever videos you're watching, make sure you've disconnected your phone from your Bluetooth speaker before the family barbecue starts. The smart doorbell has evolved rapidly over the last 10 years or so, combining traditional doorbell functionality with um, a little camera and a little microphone so that you can tell people that you're not at home even though you are. They also come with hefty subscription costs, so if you want to watch a live feed of the outside of your house, you have to pay for it. Smart fridges are growing in popularity, with features such as voice control and camera-equipped interior views. So if you're the sort of person who wants to watch their condiments in the door slowly decay, then now you can. Smart appliances in general need unnecessary amounts of user data, such as thermostats that need your location information and washing machines that want to know your date of birth. What, what do they need this information for? Do they want to know how often I wash my underwear? It, it's a lot, by the way. Often. Often. Lovely to see you again, Phil. Lovely to see you too. Well, I, th I thought it'd be nice to have a catch-up finally. Would you like a cup of tea? Would love one, thanks. Kettle on. Doesn't sound like the kettle's coming on. Uh, yes, it, it's, it's been a bit temperamental recently. <laughs> Why? Well, it, it's recently broken up with the microwave. What? It, it's a long story. Um, can I interest you in some coffee instead? Uh, sure. Coffee machine, two cappuccinos, please. No, I don't think so. Sorry? I don't appreciate being second choice all the time. You're not supposed to appreciate anything. You're a coffee machine. Just make coffee. Nah, such a coffee. I'm going on strike. <sighs> um, let's just have some water. Would you like some water? Sure. Tap on. Well, well, well. If it isn't Mr. I don't want to hydrate anymore, it's boring. Oh, for f**k's sake. Even roads aren't safe from smartware, with smart cars becoming increasingly popular. That's smart cars as in the smart cars, not not smart cars, you know, those smart cars, not those smart cars, not those. Most things in a smart car can be controlled with a simple wave of the hand, which makes you look like a Jedi in a hatchback. Some cars even include a feature called smart summons, where you can instruct your car to come over to you rather than walking towards it yourself. It's a bit like when you call your dog to come over to you, but instead of a 
Small furry animal, it's two tons of metal on wheels. Many smart cars now include advanced smartware, including Wi-Fi so people can access the internet and, you know, stream media and watch movies, and then crash their car. Self-driving cars. Self-driving cars use a combination of artificial intelligence, um, sensors, cameras, radars, all to help you travel between destinations without a human involved. So basically someone decided that driving just could be even more dangerous than it already is. Self-driving cars, let me just say, is wrong. Don't get in a car where there's no one. Seriously, don't do it, you'll die. Good morning, welcome to your driverless car. Where would you like to go to today? Uh, the, the comedy store, please. And what mode of driver would you like today? Um, London cabbie, please. All right, mate. Hello. Going to watch some comedy tonight, are you then, mate? Uh, no, I'm performing. Oh, are you a comedian? What will I have seen you in then, mate? Um, well, uh... I tell you who makes me laugh, mate. Oh, yeah? Who's that? That Michael McIntyre. He makes me laugh. Right. Yeah, he's very... And the wife saw him at the O2 last year. He was bloody hilarious, mate. He did this bit where he talks about how hotel rooms have light sensors rather than light switches right. now, which means the light goes off when you're on the toilet. I thought that was very funny and relatable, ha ha ha. Yes, uh, that's very good. What kind of comedy do you do, mate? Um, satire? Oh, you mean like politics and that? Yep. Yep, pretty much. You know who I would vote for if they ran to be leader of this country, mate? Who? Ross Kemp. He'd get this country on its feet, wouldn't he, mate? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I've changed my mind. Can I have um, uncomfortably silent Uber driver mode, please? <sighs> Michael McIntyre. In 2023, driverless car companies came under intense scrutiny. One such company, called Cruise, was forced to shut down its company completely after one of its robot taxis knocked a pedestrian down and dragged it 20 feet. That's probably not going to get a five-star review. Tesla's driver assistance software has been involved in 40 fatal car crashes since 2016. But, you know, it's Elon Musk, so literally nothing affects him ever. Which is surprising, given that everything else that Elon Musk touches turns to gold. <sighs> well, as always with many of these things, there's a halfway house. It's nice to just go out and leave your devices behind. But can I get into a car and drive to a location without sat-nav? No, I can't. So in conclusion, my advice is to choose your smartware wisely. Hey Siri, like and subscribe that video I just watched.